I mean, look, those those plasma rounds there, you know, uh, your your AP will be times two, uh, and it'll add an extra D to your to your damage, you know. So I mean, that that puts you at five D there. If, if you're talking, you know, you don't want to that those those hunting rifles and stuff, man. They're they're slow bullshit things I mean, they're good for one shot or maybe three shots but then you're taking some time off out of the fight trying to reload i think i think a fuel air would work what does one dd for damage means it means you roll one d and multiply it by 10 ah yeah, it's a, that, well, no, the that, DD would be you multiply it by 100, right? I mean, by... No, it, it's times 10, and it, that means that it, anything that is listed as DD, two things. One, it means that it's destructive, and two, yeah. um, it means that it is... Um, that you don't add the effect of your roll to the, to the damage. Is vehicle damage. It, it only has a blast radius of three. That's as good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'll hold it up there while I can screw them. That way you can still say that you can stomp it. Fine. On any of those rounds, you know, you have to ask things about, you know, are, are is it available? Blah, 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 blah. Some of this should be easier to, to grab than others, you know. Like neurotoxin rounds would probably be very difficult to find. Mm, yeah. This, yeah, the plasma rounds. I mean, because that's just got a high TL level behind them. So, you know, oh, man, I you might be able to find that directed plasma rounds. But they're 15s and 16s. Yeah, yeah, the 15s. Uh, 16 is next to impossible to find naturally. You'll have to make secretive roles to do, you know, prototype type fighting. But I I should get armor piercing for my assault guns. Man, another thing you can get to think about if you get concussion rounds. You gonna live? Yeah, the concussion rounds, um, once you knock somebody's endurance out, they're unconscious. It's got that stun effect. So, I mean, in a way, it's cheating. You don't have to take out as many. You don't have to hit them as hard to put them out. And with that 4D, I mean, you're packing a nice little whop of stunning damage. You, you only, I mean, ah, if they've got if they've got 12 endurance, you know, I mean, that's that's really big time endurance. Uh, m m very rare will that happen. If, if someone goes unconscious, they're out of the fight till the end of it. Yeah, and I don't want to do that. And I'm in danger of it. No, no, not you. I'm talking about if you shoot somebody with these uh, concussion rounds, you know, you'll roll your four dice. And you know your your gun might give you some armor piercing, but then once you've cleared out their endurance, they're unconscious. They're stunned with concussion rounds. Well, I don't have any endurance right now. It was it doesn't it's not your endurance. It right. I understand. You getting shot. But I'm afraid of getting shot since I have no endurance. Yeah. Oh, I hear you. <laughs> uh, right now, I mean that's the thing. I'm just things to to figure out. You know. You really want to get your character oh, armed so you dinner's can. Dinner's here. Get dinner's here. Okay. I had a wonderful dinner. As did I. Yeah. Actually, my dinner was just okay, but I had a wonderful snack. I. I really racked up the brownie points to dinner by having uh, dark chocolate covered strawberries for when no. the lady came home. Yeah. Nice. I mean, oh, I could sit in the shower and still be good. I mean, that, <laughs> that's, 
that's that's brownie points right there. And the lemon cupcake. You know, that's that's big time stuff. Not for me, I had a strawberry cupcake, but the store I, I drive by a lot, they it's called the Cupcake Factory. Oh yeah, we have a cupcake factory here. Yeah, I had to get some honey, and so uh, uh, you know, try to get local honey, and uh, I got, I was getting that, and then, God, man, they had to, they they would just freshly chocolate cover your strawberries for you. Nice. So you got to get six of them, right? (laughs) Yeah, you know, got to get a half dozen of them. That's like a six pack, you know. It doesn't take very long to go through that. Right. And then the cupcake, you're in the fucking cupcake factory. <laughs> yeah, it'd almost be criminal to not buy cupcakes. Yeah, oh, that would ruin my <laughs> excessive string of good luck that I, I thrive upon. Yeah, Another see. trick I've found to getting good luck is as we got this guy's house that uh, he's like a troll. He, he comes out, he'll drive 15 miles an hour with his hazard lights on, you know. He's fucking batshit crazy. But when we drive by his house, uh, we send all our bad thoughts and vibes and bad luck and ill will just right there on him. We just physically go, you know, curse the guy. Ah! And, and it's not like we're really witches or anything, but, <laughs> but fuck that guy. A spoon or a fork. It is, it is coming up on, it's the pink moon tonight. Oh, yeah? Yeah, that's the the first spring moon, new moon, full moon, uh, whatever. I would I don't just, think, I would oh, just be happy if it would stop fucking snowing. Sorry. Sorry. Well, you know, you can take your every other day of tornado warnings and, yeah. and you know, we'll take the snow. Yeah, I guess that's <laughs> I guess that could be worse. Hello, Cameron. Oh, Hello, yeah. Devin. Hello, yeah. Is 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 uh Kevin with us? I'm here. There you are. I, I probably won't, <coughs> won't talk much because I got a bad cough, but uh, gotcha. I'm here. All right. Well, welcome. I cough a lot too. I don't know why. <laughs> Quick, call both we'll go see this. We need a doctor. <laughs> we used to, I used to have a, a, a game that ran on a, a really long game that ran on Saturday nights uh, every other week, and uh, that was like a it was like a double game. It was like a six and a half hour long session. And uh, <clears throat> all these guys would pile into my game room. And, uh, you know, they smoked a lot of pot. And they would always bring, you know, uh, vape pens and whatnot. And Brownies. Yeah. <laughs> well, they also would bring like three or four fifths of really high end expensive whiskey. So we were pretty much shit faced the entire time. I'm surprised we got anything done. Actually, I, I don't think we got much done. But <clears throat> I, I generally stay away from weed unless I'm going to go to bed because I become non-functional. Like, you know, just a small puff and I'm I'm done. And I like to call it living <laughs> life on the hard setting. Right? <clears throat> so w- one night I just, I don't know, I got a wild hair. And I'm like, here, get, pass me one of those vape pens. And I took one hit, and then we all just stared at each other for like an hour because I was completely incapable of running the game. <clears throat> uh, we had a running joke because I, this one guy, I killed his character in that campaign like seven or eight times. I mean, it, it was ridiculous. Yeah, it, it was it was nuts. Welcome to the Pirates of Drynex. We'll be picking up where we left off last week. These guys were getting ready to uh, get involved in a little bit of the ultraviolence violence as uh, the Phylock and Dykeneer, uh their pirates have 
entered the base as these guys were getting ready to leave. So that can always lead to a bad day. But now, before we get started, oh. I would like to thank a friend of the Greenwater Guild Hall. None of these are sponsorships or partnerships of any kind. They're just products that we really like. I forgot to do a spill. And tonight we would like to thank uh, Speechless Bard. <clears throat> she makes beautiful leather products for your tabletop role-playing games, such as leather covers for your core rule books. Um, if you like to show off your geeky side, she's got a full line of leather dice bracelets. In fact, she just came out with a new bracelet. <laughs> the it, It's got a, uh, a, tw a D20 on it that has rolled a one, and it says, fuck around and find out. <laughs> I absolutely love that bracelet. But if you are going to order, uh, if you're here in the U.S., uh, especially if it's for a gift, you're going to want to give yourself a little bit of extra time. She's over in the U.K., so it can take a little while to cross the pond. So I have come to the decision, and I canceled the, um, the Obsidian Portal website. So... Those websites will remain up until uh, April 11th. <clears throat> um, so if there's anything that anybody wants to copy off of there, better hurry up and do it. Um, so yeah, it, they just never really gained any traction. And so I have decided that, that that money can be better spent elsewhere for the channel, <coughs> for the games. And so that's pretty much that. So, uh, let's see here. So, we will be starting off. It is Beth's turn. Um, we already did initiative. Um, and if I remember correctly, somebody threw, I think somebody tossed an EMP grenade. They did. Yes, they, they did. They did. And they, yeah. they, and they, and failed, they dropped they it. They pulsed yeah. themselves. Oh, that's right. They pulsed themselves. That's right. And so the only one that actually, uh, you know, ate shit on that, of, of course, is Dai Kinnear, the second in command. Um, so, uh, Captain Beth, what would you like to do? I'm going to move here, and I'm going to the PDM to get that guy. Throw no, in you're the plasma for the leader. All right. <laughs> Oh, and a plasma grenade. Do we recognize these guys from any of our thieves run-ins or anything, or are these just some random pirate They dudes? were They were at the uh, palace the last time we were at the palace. Yes, they were. Oh, well, then, fuck them. Yeah, I'll enjoy doing something with their ship. I rolled. <laughs> I get it. I want it. I rolled, like, 14. Oh. After Adam's shit, I did really He's going to have a bad day, Captain Beth. He is. Right. And what, you're shooting the... Um, the you're shooting the PGHP, or...? Yeah. All right. Um, oh, my goodness. So, yeah, roll your 1DD damage. So, 1D <laughs> times 10. Uh, a 4. So, 40 points. <laughs> Nuke that Aslan. Yeah, seriously. Kill him, kill him. Shit. We all have radiation sickness. You get, you get the fuck out of here. Can't, can't waste a lot of time. And I don't want them to get to their ship before we get to ours. That would not be good. <laughs> so, yeah, Beth one-shots Philoak, and he... Uh, he is not dead, but he is very badly burned and uh, is unconscious. All right. Uh, and yeah, his uh, his combat armor is pro it's, it's probably no more at that point, I would think. <laughs> All right. And I don't know if you wanted to do any more movement or if you have any more left. I should. I barely went anywhere. I could probably get out of the way. Okay. This guy might still have a beat on you, but uh, it really depends if he's going to be alive because it is uh, <laughs> radiation sickness Gregor's turn. I have endurance of zero, so how far can I move? Uh, well, until you're unconscious, you can move as far as you want. It's not until you try to do anything, um, you know, 
too exerting, you're probably not going to want to run a marathon or or hike it. Well, I I want to move to this Ayers here. Okay. And I have a pistol, and I'm just going to sight out. Okay. So you're you're I, basically aiming at this Iris. At, yes. You. If you mm, let me see. You could hit that guy. You could hit this guy right here if you wanted to. Well, let's do that. Okay. And let's see. I have slug one. So it's 2D plus one? Uh, plus your dex modifier as well. Oh, that's zero. Hold on. I need to look what the... I got a 10. These guys are wearing hostile environment vac suits with a plus 8 uh, protection, so a 10 hits with a plus 2 to damage. No, and I, I, what do I roll for damage? Uh, Same what kind thing? Of, what kind of pistol are you using? Oh, I'm using an assault pistol. It's uh, 3D, min 3D minus 3. Okay, so then that means it is 3D minus 1. The net. 8. Okay, so it it does not penetrate his uh, hostile environment vac suit, uh, but his hostile environment vac suit does have a nice big bullet in it now. Uh, okay. <clears throat> Ox, what would you like to do? Uh, okay. I want to vaporize them all before I'm... <coughs> well, yeah. <laughs> all right. Um, I will move up here, and I will also take aim at the, uh, the doorway where they're coming from. Okay. Uh, can, I, can I even get a glimpse of this one guy here? Hmm. Probably not. Yeah, you could. Okay. Uh, well, then we'll introduce him to Armor Piercing Discarding Sabbath. Okay. Okay. It's going to leave an even bigger hole in his vaccine. Uh, seven to hit and damage nine if it hit. <clears throat> it did not hit. Okay. Close, though. But it right. did. It did punch a hole in the wall next to him. Yes, it did. All right. Tang, what what have you got up your sleeve? God, you know, their leader just got evaporated. Uh, they were at Dredix, you know. Uh, I think I'm going to amplify my voice really loud. And uh, I'm going to, I'm going to turn, I'm going to yell out, you know, uh, your leader's dead. Turn on your second command and we'll let you join us. If you continue to fight, all of you will die, and then we will hunt down everybody that knows you and kill them too. I am Ting, the Star Dragon Knight of Yagersil. You will join us or die. You can make a persuasion plus Soch check, but you're going to have to get a 14 or better. All right, well, let's just give it a fucking shot. Uh, I can use my social, though. So that's three. Fuck it, it's plus three. The fuck ever. You have a plus three to your social? Nope, I have plus two to my social with a 12, but my mm. persuade is one, so that gives me a total of plus three. Okay. Eleven. Ugh. Yeah, Ugh. they're not going to turn on you, uh, or turn on Die Kinnear. All right. Uh, so, yeah, you, you amplify your voice and yell that out, and uh, mm. nothing happens. Uh, okay. I would say that's probably a free action if you still wanted to move and you've got your choice of either a significant action and a minor action or three minors. <clears throat> you know, I'm just going to kind of move right here. And uh, yeah, right there is pretty good. And let's just do some measurement real quick. Yeah. Kind of right, 
right down there around her deep in the hall, even if I have to move just a little bit more to get a to get a, a an angle and I'm just gonna toss a grenade. Okay. You know, down down in there. So what uh, kind of grenade are you tossing? See, that's a good question because I have an assortment of them. And uh And he was quick and he just grabbed one. Well, uh, I think I'm gonna throw a plasma just because I haven't. I haven't thrown one of them, and that's a whole bunch of dice. So plasma grenades. Yeah. Uh, one. Let me double check. Seven. Range on that. Or uh, blast radius, rather. Yeah, I'm looking to the. The plasma. Plasma grenade's got a blast of six. So six meters. Yep, and 8D. Wow, that would get right to the door, assuming that you drop it at her feet. I'm going to go ahead and go behind her there, you know? Just, I'm going to throw it down, uh, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'll point to a spot that I'm aiming at that. So you're, is, you're shooting for more I'm gonna, like... Yeah, back I'm gonna here. step. Yeah, I'm gonna step here. Then, yeah, I'm gonna I'm going for the back of the hallway there. Yeah, down down in here, somewhere. Okay. You know, let's 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 just mark this spot as my ground zero that I'm aiming for. Okay. And and uh, and see, you know. Cause... So go ahead and make an athletics dex check. All right. So, I uh, I have plus. I used to have this shit memorized, but I played so many games that I, I have to actually look them up now. <laughs> Welcome to my world. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Plus four to my decks, which makes my now decks at uh, 15. So that's like a plus two, plus two to this roll. Is that right? That, 15 is a plus two DM. That is a good question. Plus three. Okay, I'll take the plus three to this roll. And got an eight because of fucking you that extra. dropped it right where it needs to be. All right, so now I'll roll uh, 8D. Is that right? That is what it looks like. This is going to be a bad day for everybody, I think. Thirty-three points of damage to everybody in that area there. Fuck me. Okay. Man, they really should have listened when you gave them that. Awesome. I tried, man. You know, I I I marked it off my list. Now I only have two plasma grenades left. But God, those are fun. But we gotta get the fuck out of here. Those were your commands, Captain, and I try to please. So Die Kinnear is having a bad day. Uh. Whoops. We all are fucking really sick. Yeah. We're not going to run into these people again. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, that maybe somebody will give the fuck up now. <laughs> you know? <laughs> I mean. Give me. Well, these guys are running out of air, remember? Yeah. Uh, they... Dai Kinnear uh, is vaporized in the blast. Like, she's like. Dead, dead, no more. She, mm. she does not exist. Yep. And as I throw it, I will say, uh, keep dreaming big so you'll never wake up. <laughs> 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 These guys. Oh, it went back here. It will take out like two of these guys. I am fairly certain. <coughs> as I... Well, you know, I have to use grenades because I insist on not using firearms. Because I'm a pacifist. <laughs> yeah, you are. <laughs> yeah. So... These two poor schlubs in the back. This guy. And 
this guy. There we go. Uh, yeah. That's not what I was trying to do. Nothing I remember there. And then I'm just going to use the rest <laughs> of four. And so what I've got, I've got one meter of movement left, basically. Yep. So take yeah. a step to the side. <laughs> yeah, I could just kind of come right over there is about right. You know, oops. Like right there, up against the wall, kind of back out. Speak, the... Speaking of losing your mind playing multiple games, did you happen to take a look at uh, Carcass Crawler issue number three yet? I, I did. That's it, so good. It's, that... it's, 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 it's got some cool race, I mean, cool classes I'm thinking about. Like my next character will probably be a Beastmaster. But... Yeah, Beastmaster is really cool. Um, the uh, but I like even the the other ones too. The the tiefling and the dragonborn came out really well, yeah. and uh, I really like the uh, mutoid, you know, because oh, they're yeah. such freaky. Anybody who's played um, Curse of Strahd knows all about yeah. those bizarre little creatures. But... The uh, mycelium yeah, is pretty cool too. <clears throat> that'll wrap up my turn. Okay. You know? uh, I think I, I think I did enough. All right, Keith, there's still four guys that have survived this blast. What would you like to do? Uh, so first of all, I'm going to yell down the hall. Uh, it might be time to flee. <laughs> uh, go ahead and make a persuasion plus uh, social check. I bet okay. you lower the difficulty now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's 12 okay yeah. so yeah these guys um in response they they drop their rifles well great what took you so fucking long <laughs> yeah y'all could have just parked your ship right down next to ours and just said here we are you can have it and, and you would have saved lives y'all are murderers <laughs> <laughs> so yeah they surrender um and uh so <clears throat> uh nifty little uh side piece so if you remember at the at the uh dinner um, back on Drenax, uh, you got well, Tang, if I remember correctly, met uh, Phylok and uh, Dykenir. <clears throat> yeah. So these these four idiots uh, surrender, and and what the nifty, funny little piece of information is that Dykenir, come to find out, is a telepath, but she has a a weird um. She has a weird bonus that she can get. So she actually gains a plus two to her telepathy if she's intimately close with somebody. So oh. if King had gone back or taken her up on her offer to go back to take her back to his quarters and they did the deed, she would have had an additional plus two bonus to any tele telepathy checks when trying to read Ting. But I did my job. It's yeah, like, you nope. you did not do that. But I mean, she's still telepathic, so that that's basically how the telepathic. that's how they knew that you were here. Right. Was telepathic. And these guys pretty much freely give up that information. They don't know that. They don't know if any of you have any uh, psionic abilities, but um, yeah, they yeah, they it'll... they freely give that information up. Yeah, but we're we're going. Uh, I, be I believe we're going to the Osiris immediately okay. because where we're headed, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, we're feeling pretty icky, so we need to get to the med bay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that is a that is yeah. a good yeah. idea. So, and these four guys need to go to our our brig uh, initially for processing and intake, where they can give us the details on how to access and take their ship. We can also wash their brain. 
We can wash their brains. That's are we yeah. gonna leave the Aslan just lying there? In the radio oh yeah, activity? yeah. I mean, yeah, he's he, gonna get close by radio. Yeah. It's not our concern. We, I will take a, a his finger, a finger and an eyeball. <laughs> <laughs> They're gonna be really radioactive. You need an ear. You need an well, ear. no, I mean, if 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 he has biometric locks on his shit. Oh, okay. That's not that, that's... all right. I thought you were doing it for fun. Right. No. Okay. No. I mean, it doesn't have to not be fun. That would be way too mild for Ting's fun. Yeah, I, I, you know, I'd be like, oh, you know, if your second command lived, you know, I would be feeding her pieces of this guy. That's true. She said, she, yeah. So they... God, you think if she read up my fucking mind too fucking much, she would have come up with the idea of maybe we ought to leave these people alone. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, so essentially, Phylock and his gang were after whatever this treasure of Sindel is. They had no idea what it is. I mean, you guys have no idea what it is. The most right. that you've gotten out of this so far is a, uh, you got a... You got a uh, particle beam gun mm-hmm. for for a ship, and you got some some a new firing solution and coordinates. Now the coordinates, um, they we send also got you... five bots. That, and that's, some tumors, probably. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> yes, and <laughs> and possibly tumors. Um, so the. You got a firing solution uh, telling you to aim at ACE, and the astrogation coordinates are showing a jump solution for the ACE system. Now, when you guys get back to the ship, you guys are, uh, you you lock these uh, guys up in the brig, uh, which is 15 up here, down on deck two, and uh, yeah, down to their skivvies. Right. Yeah, and I thought so we'll was... be giving you all this back shortly, as soon as you've been processed. And luckily, right down the hall is the medical bay, and so uh, I don't know, uh, Beth. Do you want to do some um, some uh, healing and try to uh, do some first aid on these guys and get them healed up? They already took their anti-rad uh, meds, so. Um, that should lower their, um, I, I think it drops it by what? A hundred rads per dose. Yeah. Yeah. I thought we were taking like tons of it. Yeah. Um, so they're, they're, whatever. their rads will have dropped by a hundred, but they're still sick. So you're going to need to do, um, some first aid. So medic plus intellect or education. <clears throat> You should get bonuses for being in a med bay, blah, blah, blah. That's true. Uh, yeah, well, you um, get a automatic plus two to that roll because you are in your med bay. All right. Well, that brings it to an absurd 17. So. Okay. So, let's right. see here. Wow. We all got better and we're more attractive now. So, <laughs> right. <laughs> so, that is a max of nine points back. Whoever, whoever right. is uh, hurting. That's what I'm talking about. Right so there. I got my endurance back. Yes. World class pirate doctor. Oh, yeah. Big combo. Um, I only have seven endurance, so what do I do with the other two points? <laughs> Nothing. They just they go away. They're just badges of honor. Yep. <clears throat> so the next stop uh in the route uh is uh, that other ship bring mm-hmm. us up we're are we going to try to take over the other ship oh that's true if it's out there sure yeah let's see I what mean, they got that we've, is we've, true we've we've kind of we've kind of gotten some people, some people for this this pur- purpose true yeah let's not forget the ship yeah. yeah. So I mean, it, if anything, we can send that ship, uh, just you know, to a place for us to rendezvous with in the near future. 
uh, and, free and, world, you know, send it to free world. What is it? Tech world? We, we sell it to Tech World's graveyard. I think that we should give one of the killbots to Tech World and they'll be thrilled. Like if we, or we could hold it in reserve in case we need to do something to make, make it up to them. You know, like three bucks up the map. Right. Even in the kill bot will probably fix it. Shit, maybe we should give them to give one to them anyway, since I think they're probably the only ones with any hope of reprogramming it. And if it goes psychotic on their world, it doesn't really it won't murder. Oh, <laughs> we can, would definitely we can be the them. Really? Yeah. Oh, I thought we were like not going to be able to. Do that. Okay. Oh no, no uh, Keith and I were going to uh, do task chains on their ass and jump while we we're in jump space. Oh, cool. All right. So the right. ship that they took down, <clears throat> um, really, it doesn't have a crew because they were all a part of this, um, this landing action. They they were overly confident in trying to take you guys out. Um, but you do find the ship. It is a four hundred ton uh, Iakau class trader. It is an Aslan ship, and. Uh, it is a typical, it would be considered a tramp freighter by Aslan Mean. Um, it's basically designed to be crewed by a single family. Um, you know, just just a standard trader ship. Uh, it's, a, it's a cargo ship. Um, now, of course, they, because they're pirates, it has um, four, or, yeah, four turrets on it. Um, that are of uh, various weaponry. Um, but what do you guys... Uh, Let's dock it to our ship and take it with us. Well, that kills our jump uh, stuff, but we have crew people that we've hired and we've been feeding and shit that we, sh we should be able to... We should be able to fully end this ship, I think, at least to be able to send it to a location with just on-hand staff that we're already paying. That is true. Uh, so yeah, you can mm, yeah. your your crew. You can uh, it 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 require well. It ha normally has a crew of a pilot, astrogator, purser, and engineer. Um, really, you only need the pilot, astrogator, and engineer. So three people. Um, and but I mean, even if, <clears throat> even if you did attach it uh, to one of the uh, type three clamps. You you're you don't have to worry about um at this point you don't have to worry about um more than one one uh parsec jump because the next stop uh is Thebus in the line. Uh, because there may be another clue there. You guys are still chasing after rest after the rest of these uh, yeah. uh, message globes. And so and let's clamp it. Yeah, you can take it with that's, you for now. That's my suggestion: is clamp it. All right, yeah. let's do it. Uh, yeah. I have a question. Yeah, sure. While I was the two weeks I was out, did you give out any any points? Uh, I don't believe I did. Okay. Nothing yet. You okay. returning will probably help us get points more than when you're gone and us getting points. That's okay. Yeah, yeah, that's that's. For I'm, sure. uh, I was just well, no, because I wanted to get gotta, my back suit yeah. up. <laughs> you gotta, you gotta, I, I gotta armor, get so my he's... back suit up so I can get a better armor. Right, right. Yeah, he'll feel obligated to give us all treats because you need treats. <laughs> <laughs> Is that how that works? No, I don't know. I'm just talking shit. I'm just trying to have a monologue going while we figure out, you know, what's up. I guess There's we're gonna ways spend around a... needing the points too, like um, ways of access stuff if you don't like having ports installed in your spine. You can get your, your uh, specifically modified to perform certain tasks to give you a bonus as well. What do I go to buy the ammunition? I'm so sorry. Make do we have to buy armor piercing, or can we make it? Uh, you probably have to buy them. I don't know that you guys have any um, fabs. Uh, I don't know. 
Give me luck. Does this thing have a... Well, the Rorik's command vessel does have a workshop. So, theoretically speaking, you you guys could uh, go in the workshop and make armor-piercing ammo. You still have to supply uh, uh, the base materials, which I believe, by the rules, are half the cost of the shit for whatever you're trying to make. Right. So, if, you, if you're trying to make what something that costs a thousand use? credits... Oh, these these are fabrication chambers. Yeah, so so you you just uh, spit stuff in and it comes out. And you don't have to do any rolls. Uh, oh, you no. would well. This this isn't a fabrication chamber. This is a workshop aboard the ship, which would have the equipment necessary to do something like make armor piercing rounds. But um, that is partially true. You do need to have the materials to do it. Um, and somebody would need to make a gun combat plus education or intellect check in order to actually make those. Nice. And I would say that the, the effect of that check would be how many magazines worth of rounds that you could make. Uh, yeah, that's cool. That's a, that's a neat little pastime thing, but... Yeah, I mean, you, I can guess, do that, you can do that in the week in jump space. So. Yeah, I guess right now we're going to uh, Thebes is our, our next jump. Yep, Thebes would be yeah. your next jump. Now, um, go back here. So, actually, okay. I got an 11. Okay. Uh, so you're working on... <coughs> so that you can make uh, three magazines worth of armor-piercing rounds. Good. Uh, At least something to add to my assault rifle. <laughs> right, yes. Make it, give it that little extra punch. Hey, that shit adds up. I mean, if you're thinking about your gun normally has, what, a, a four, right? So if you get another four on eight, I mean, most things are only going to have, like, 10 or 12 points of armor anyway until the guys are really armored up. I mean, the, the big bad boys are going to have 20-plus armor on, you know, have, you know, fun. On here. We keep getting big badasses that have shit like that. That's unfortunate. Yeah. Ugh. So much for that dinner. And it goes in tomorrow's trash. So we're going to have to do a bunch of computer programming or robotics checks, right? That's what I need to know. <laughs> that. Uh, for what? For Keith and I reprogramming the uh, Sindalian death bots. Oh, yeah. There's four of them. And then there's the the, the crew bot. You know what I'm talking about? Right. Yes, I do know. Yeah. yeah. But I don't, we don't have to necessarily break him, I don't think. Uh, we might have to do something to him, but the Sindalian death bots would be great boarding action bots. Yeah, just send them in front of everybody. Uh, but, I mean, they're priceless. I mean, so in theory, we could probably get a bot that would uh, do the same thing they can do, uh, and 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 still trade these off uh, for. I mean, ah, they they got to win extremely big favors. Yeah. But I mean, I I definitely I mean, what we should at least keep two of them, and then two of them that we can 
barter with or gift or you know what the fuck ever i i don't i i personally don't care it, you know king's gonna be doing some of the work too so and he he definitely is but i mean i always look at it like it, it was obtained uh on the crew mission it's the crew shit we're just doing the work on it we could uh we could gift it to uh Olab and uh and, and do the thing that they did uh, back in the Sindelian Empire. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, we, he might give us a medal or something for that shit. Yeah, you know? I mean, that'd be looking spiffy. I mean, you know, we've gotten some medals that are real medals now. I'm going to start removing the ones that were already on mine. And I'm just going <laughs> to, I'm going to just continuously just award us shit every time. Like this, this will have a little orb looking medal. For, for this. We got a ship out of it. It's worth putting a medal on. Right. So technically you actually got two ships out of that because the uh well, no, you got the one ship. The there was a second ship um in orbit, uh, but they have been monitoring their own communications and they're not stupid. Um they are in a type S scout. They have decided to um, Leave. Yeah, get the hell out of Dodge, and so they they bolted. Um, but you guys, uh, so Beth, go ahead and make a um, piloting plus Dex check to to get uh, stole their <laughs> off world. Bikes too. Remember that we stole their five grav bikes. That's true. Yeah, you've got f their five <laughs> grav bikes in your cargo hold. Yeah, their G bikes. Got eleven. Okay, so Beth lifts this uh, this large ship off, and it takes off like a big bird of prey, and uh, and she's she's making for the uh, the uh, <clears throat> ninety diameter uh, jump limit rather than hundred because this has early jump, and so in the process of heading that direction, I. Uh, then uh, Keith, of course, can make his astrogation check for Thebus. I'm going to go ahead and do a scan, if that's okay. Yeah. While we're doing all this neat shit. I'm going to add two, just because I'm in this ship using its sensors. <laughs> yep. And get a 16. Yeah, so you don't pick up any other ships in the area. Um not as it should be. As it should be. I mean, uh, Noricum is not a high traffic area. There are some yeah. some pl uh, some ships do come to do some trade mm. here, but um, it is not by any means mm. on the on the uh, must see tourist list. So, what did Keith get for astrogation? Uh, Ten. Okay. And Keith can go ahead and make a uh, engineering power plus uh, intellect or education. So as a standby, I very rarely know when I'm going to go on. And they are often unexpected and catch me by surprise. And then I have if I'm lucky. I'm okay. And then you can make your uh, engineering J drive plus intellect or education check with a plus two. Fourteen. Okay, so Keith is able to jump uh, with no difficulties. <clears throat> so while you are in uh, jump space for the week, um, Gregor is down in the workshop. Um, where is the workshop? Okay. It does. It is. I'm curious. Right here. here it's it always the last place you look. Right. <laughs> So yeah, there's a workshop. Looks like it's got a big Lego in it, and uh, so Gregor's down there. He makes three magazines of this uh, of his um, custom armor-piercing rounds. I assume you're making them all for your, all three magazines for your assault rifle. Yes. Okay. And so that basically is how Gregor spends his week. Um, you know, it's a normal... Are you guys uh, interrogating your four prisoners down here in the brig? 
what 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 are you guys uh doing with them? Are you just throw them in there and forget about them? <clears throat> no. I have left this judgment call up to King. Oh yeah, well I would definitely question them vigorously interrogate them. You know, I I will I will walk in there and uh and and talk yeah, to them. And if they that. if they get froggy in any kind of way, uh I'm gonna use my monofilament bit uh claw augmentations to make parts of them okay very violently. So, so I mean, I mean I'm not fucked up about them as a threat. What are what are you what I mean you say you're interrogating, what are you asking them? Well, at first I want to know their skill sets and and all of that. I mean, like exactly what kind of what kind of guys are you? Well, you know, one of them branches or yeah. So they just are they just gun toadies? Yeah. Uh, yeah, more or less. I mean, um, they were being used in a marine type capacity, but for the most part, these guys. Would be considered a standard space hand, so they've got a smattering of, you know, base piloting skills, maybe okay. uh, engineering zero, maybe but they can drive... mechanic one. Can they ride those grav bikes? Oh, yeah. Yeah, all right, they're good at that, they say. I, I wouldn't say good at it, but they've got, like, uh, they've got flyer zero, and, uh, yeah. you know, they've got, like, vac suit two. Right, right. I mean, uh, yeah. I, well, we, you know, we can, you know, I'm gonna give them a lot of questioning and test their loyalty base. I mean, they do realize that their former employee has been employer has been exterminated. Right. And and so I mean, they definitely need a, a thing. And, and, and these are definitely pirate minded men. Oh yeah. Yeah. Um, Three guys know, and one woman. Well, have have they have they heard of us? Uh, yes. Uh, so essentially, um, of course they've heard of pirate lords. Well, not necessarily. Not, I well, mean, that's, that's technically most kind people of don't, well, most people don't know who the lords of Thieve are. And, uh, it's not like the pirate lords of Thieve broadcast their membership. But, um, as far as your pirating exploits, yes, they have heard of you. I mean, um, you know, who hasn't? Uh, you guys are the uh, pirates that early on in your career, you hit an Imperial treasure ship. So um, in pirating circles, yes, you are well known. And uh, um, you're also you're also known for being the ones that actually um, went on the offensive against a Imperial patrol corvette. So... You know, and and gave him a bloody nose with nuclear missiles. So yeah, you're you're there. People, other pirates have heard of you. Okay, so uh, considering that you've heard of us and and you know who we are, uh, you know what what the fuck were y'all thinking? That they were going to take whatever the treasure of Sindal was right out from under you. Are you? They, the assumption the assumption that Philok and his gang had was that the treasure of Sindal was going to be in this base on Noricum because Noricum Noricum used to be named Sindal. It was the yeah. imperial capital. So the yeah. assumption was that if you guys found a secret vault there that it was going to be loaded with treasure. Right. And they were okay. going to help themselves to it, huh? That yeah. yeah, they were going to let you do all the work and then take it up, uh, take it from you, as you were trying to leave. So you thought you would bully us uh, into giving it up? Was well, that... Phi Locke's idea was to just kill you, but sure. Yeah. Okay. Well, I guess uh, uh, I, I'm cool with them joining. I mean, they're just fucking pirates. It's not like it was their dumb idea, uh, you know. They're, they're obvious that they'll they'll take on uh, uh, very difficult missions. You know, they they might give up on us. You know, if well, it I mean, gets these, really bad. These four these uh, four individuals are in, are capable of flying that ship you just took. So if you if you want to hire them on as pirates, you could load them up into that ship and yeah. essentially. Um, 
tell them to take it and go where you know you want them to go I, i'd rather not put them back on their same ship I, I mean they can get rotated out with guys we already have on hand that can can do that i, I mean true uh, uh you know I, I assume the people we already have on hand probably are more likely to do what we tell them than these four, these four. Yeah, these guys need to earn some. some <laughs> I mean, some, give them they, back yeah, the ship so they can they, need, they can go do whatever they want. They need to earn some <laughs> rep with us, I think, before they just go out and and take their ship back. But uh, you know, we we'll definitely you know. Yeah, let's see if it works out. Yeah, I mean, you know, uh, we've we've got we've got multiple retirement plans here on our crew. Uh, you know, it could be anywhere from a lucrative uh, uh, exit to, you know, uh, a vaporization. So, yeah, yeah, uh, you know, but, uh, you know, we, we you know, hopefully you heard the reputation about how we uh, do stand by our crew. We'll we'll go to any lengths to go retrieve our people. Yeah, I mean, th um, this ship, I mean, so... <laughs> Beth's, the captain's cabin is, I don't know if you've looked at this, but this is up here. It is a luxury stateroom. And mm. it's right right behind the bridge, so she can <laughs> just step right out of her room and onto the bridge. <laughs> and then down here, there are four of these high staterooms. So, essentially, you guys all have uh, pretty luxurious sleeping quarters. And then <clears throat> these are regular standard staterooms. And then down here, there is a barracks. So <laughs> you guys can, you know, fill this barracks with Marines. Um, yeah. th this is a gnarly ship, no doubt about it. Yeah, uh, you know, <laughs> I'm, I'm thinking personally that uh, these, these could be our Grav Cav uh, troopers. You know, uh, they come in on their grav bikes and and will quickly remotely start putting down hate putting uh, down in hate. places. Yeah, we just need to get them some some equipment and and you know, we can you know we can thin them out as we send them on combat missions so we go places. Right. Yeah. Well, somebody needs to train them on. Somebody needs to train them on recon. Yeah. And stealth. Well, yeah, that yeah. that is true. <laughs> well, I mean, they did have a lot of numbers. Uh, it's just, I mean, I mean, they they really brought a knife to a gunfight there. Uh, yeah. uh, we want to go over the the computer systems of their ship, okay, uh, and see if it kind of gives. I mean, there's there's intel on there that you know we would like to assimilate it to our own databanks. We want to make sure there's no viruses or spyware or anything like that first. Sure, go ahead and make a uh, go ahead and make an electronics computers plus intellect or education check. All right. Uh, I'm gonna use. Uh, I'm gonna hook them up to the to the ship's TL15 computer. Okay. okay. If that's okay. So uh, whatever bonuses I get on just having a higher thing than that, then. You know, just go ahead and apply that. I, I, I got a naked 13 with just my computer and so, intellect. So, yeah, you're Still. able to to uh, log in <clears throat> to their ship. You bypass their, um, their security fairly easily. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and um, so you do um, learn in their ship or, or in their ship's computer that... Um, that they there the the log shows that there may be another interested group of pirates in going after the uh going after the treasure of Sindal. And that other group of pirates is listed by name. And you have met this guy once or twice before. Um, it is Peter Valus's gang. Now, Peter Valus is mm. is, is a per, you haven't talked to him in in quite some time, but like three years ago, <laughs> but, uh, when you guys were first starting out as pirates, 
when you guys were first starting out as pirates, or at least when uh, Beth and Keith were, um, they they had a run in uh, with Peter Valus, and Peter Valus. Uh, he is a pirate, but, um, that's not really his prime reason for being a pirate. His reason for being a pirate is that, uh, he and his wife and children were originally, uh, slaves of the, um, Glorious Empire. And, uh, the Glorious Empire was invaded the planet that they were on was invaded by the aslan harry and during the invasion uh his wife and children were killed and he uh basically took that and uh decided that uh all aslan are are going to pay for it and so he basically does all of his pirating right along the edge of the Harate uh, Trojan Reach border, all along those Aslan worlds. And uh, he he's kind of crazy. He, he's... Any kind of intel on him possibly having a, uh, a suspected base or anything or a, a place of operation? You know, if... If there was a place where he called home, where would that be? Well, pretty much everybody knows, for the most part, um, he calls Steve home. Like in it, when they're not out uh, raiding along the Aslan border, um, they pretty much head back to Thieve and park it there, mostly to sell whatever loot that they've got. Um, but that that more or less is their home. It's also to be noted that that uh, that Beth and Keith know that Peter Valus is one of the Lords of Thief. Oh <clears throat> uh, yeah. So if we fuck him off, no one's really got to know about it. Yeah. Yeah. Th until, yeah. That's a sticky until we situation. Put the movie out. <clears throat> that's a sticky situation. You don't necessarily um, want to uh, kill him because he's a fellow lord and and something like that usually requires all of the lords of thieve kind of giving the green light on that yeah but he we would just die. gotta beat him to it yeah if we could if we could you know maybe we can get the hand, trick trick it and set it up so the imperium snatches his happy pirate ass up to appease the pirate activity you know on their side and uh and we could remove him. If we win the, the race to this thing, then we don't have, you know, fuck him. <laughs> it, 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 I mean, really, if, I mean, we get the treasure. He can suck, he can suck fucking balls. <laughs> I mean, we got the treasure. What's he going to do about it? That's going to go more, they go around to mama and complain. Yeah. I mean, well, he right. doesn't lay claim to our treasure. This is our shit. That's true. Yeah. I mean, we are, we are the Knights of Sindal. Whether anyone else recognizes it or not, it's we're the Don Quixotes of space. <laughs> yeah, I mean uh, the way the the pirates uh, kind of like. I mean, of course, um, you guys have your your titles and whatnot, but the pirates of Thieve, when they deal with you, their thought on the matter is that that's all bullshit, and you guys are just pirates like everybody else. <laughs> so. Yep. Doesn't matter. Yeah, Doesn't matter. yeah, they they made us a pirate lord, so they think they think something's there. So you learn cool. that um, uh, there, and there is reference that there may be other interested parties as well. Peter Valus is only the only one that uh, Philoak <laughs> had confirmed, uh, and and come to find out, Philoak. Um, you know, the reason why he confirmed it is because he's always trying to stay away or from Peter Valus. Fair enough. You know, then, uh, Philo is Aslan. And, yeah. I'll, and to I'll be make honest, it... I would think any other pirate group would be trying to yeah. be involved. I'm, I'm going to go ahead and make a detailed report with all that and send it to uh, all of the, the player character staff. Okay. Uh, you know, and... And that's that. Okay. So there, there's my my intel report. 
So, um, you guys, come out of, after your week, you guys come out of jump space. Actually, you come out a little bit early, and you come into the Thebus system. And so, this is the Thebus system. Uh, you can see that Thebus is actually a moon of the, of a large gas giant that is 0.2 AU from... Uh, the primary star, an M3 type 5 star. Um, the uh, Cebus, uh, these the planet is, uh, you know, it's not a terrible world. Uh, what does it say about it? It says, well, it, it ain't great. It was virtually annihilated during the Sindalian Civil War. Um, it is mo so the planet has kind of grown back, and Thebus is uh mostly a wilderness now, and um, it has more or less gained a reputation, um, especially among imperial nobles, that if they are going to tour the Trojan Reach, that Thebus is um, uh, you know, you have to go hunting on Thebus because. You know, you need to bring back a uh, a trophy, and your your tour of the Trojan Reach for the nobles is not complete until you do so. And one of the main species that is hunted on Thebus is the Theban lion, which is technically a mutant that was produced due to biological weapons that were used during the Sindalian War. And, uh, you know... Uh, these nobles will show up to hunt the Theban lion in order to get its pelt, which is kind of a must-have item. But you guys uh, pop into the system, and... Uh, I mean, That's my scan of dude, bullshit. Yeah, you... So, your scan is... Uh, Shit. Yeah, you don't, you don't pick anything up, but uh, you do get a, you are the one thing you are picking up on comms is that there is a um, a distress call. Oh no! Oh, run, run away! Well, run away! Listen, listen to the re distress call now. Uh, we as there is a code in in space that when someone yells a distress, you go and loot them. <laughs> it's, it, is, it is a rule you know it's, so the, it's the pirate code the, the I, distress call comes in and, and you hear signal gk signal gk um is, is there anybody out there this is the yacht lioness 2 we seem to oh, be a goody. little we seem to be a little <laughs> off course signal gk need assistance and looking at your your uh terrible terrible sensor roll, you do detect, uh, because thanks to the distress call, you do detect Lioness 2. Um, but she is like 10 million kilometers out. We've got a thrust of five. I mean, we can, we can really roll that way. Uh, what is, seems to be the problem besides just being off kilter is... Are you so? Are you guys heading towards uh, Lioness Two? Is oh fuck! Here? I don't know. We want to know more. more give us more information. Okay, I'm so go ahead. you're on comms. I, I take it. Um, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, Lioness Two. This is Ting Hansen, uh, Star Knight of uh, Jagersil. What what seems to be the problem? Oh. Uh, uh, this is Baron Karuda. Uh, I, I uh, have actually come from the world of Deneb, uh, which is up in the Spinward Marches. Um, I was en route to the Florian League uh, on board a liner, but I thought I would stop in, uh, here and do some uh, hunting on Thebus. I tried to scoop fuel from the atmosphere of the gas giant, but damaged my ship in the attempt. 
Well, I, I really am not a technical person. I don't really know a whole lot of what I'm doing or quite what is wrong. Uh, there's a lot of little lights on the control thingy, and they've all turned red. Is that bad? <laughs> oh, that is terrible, sir. What we'll need you to do is go ahead and power down and maintain that. We will come dock with you, and we will we will fix your ship up and take care of you. In a, well, in a it, 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 the ship is powered down. It is sinking into oh. the gas giant. We got your back. We're coming to get you. Just be cool. We'll come get you. Oh, we could send our we could send our new guys on their um, Aslan ship over there. Okay, it, it would be like a good test to see if they'll if they're gonna come back and be loyal, and if not, then who gives a fuck? You know, really. They can go down on the gas giant. Yeah, or not. I'll yeah, I'll gather them up. You know, I'll be like you know, kind of win win, sink or swim. Yeah, yeah, we're gonna give you access to your old ship. Uh, and, and what we want you to do is go and rescue the lioness, or at least the crew of the lioness. But uh, we need you to go and get that get that ship running. I do not and, like this idea. <laughs> and, and bring it back. I, I thought we would just go scoop that fucker up with our fucking docking clamp and, and just take yeah, it. Yeah, that's, like, that's what I was thinking. We, we well, pick it up ourselves. Because if we send them... They have jump capability. They could take off. I don't care. And, and Never. We, the, no. it's a ship. Yeah, it's a ship. Okay. <laughs> uh, you guys are talking I, down. I, I How do many like ships the, do you have? We what need kind of ship is the lioness? It's is a it, yacht. It's, better, it, it's a yacht. A yacht. Yep. Oh, that's better than the other thing. So, but we, I don't think we can clamp two ships, can we? Yeah. So you really? can. Um, oh, I my main concern is this being a trap. Maybe and, Peter Vale is actually it's over there. And actually, let me let help. me double check something. Uh, da da da. Okay. So oh, wrong book. I mean, we're rolling without a transponder on, and he didn't freak out on that. Mm. Should we oh, turn the transponder he, on? I mean, I, what uh, I don't know. <clears throat> yeah, you might not know, or it could be trapped. Yeah. Yeah. You well, know. At least we can approach it with two ships. Uh, that's, I mean, you have to it, it make yeah. it makes combat going. So, I mean, we can we can go ahead and and. Uh, and head that way if we want, and then detach when we get a little closer. I mean, we're not far from being within weapon range of them to our particle barbette, and and they can, you know, they can eat that if they act up or anybody else. So are are you? So you've got a thrust of uh, five. Do you? Yes. So are you using are you are you going at five G's? Are you doing a a high burn? Yeah, I mean, either um, ten so million kilometers over there or he's gonna die. Is it, I know that they're falling. Yeah, so they they are they if, are if dropping. Okay. Well if they're gonna die then that, there's no point of going over there, so let's go with Jesse can well, Somebody do math. <laughs> I mean, it, it, it's not like it's go they're going to die before. Um, if you if you were to hit if you were to do a full five G's, you could get there before they sink into the atmosphere. So we can save them, or they can die. So okay, so the the Rorik's command ship is equipped with two sets, one on each end of each wing of uh, Type 3 docking clamps. So those docking clamps can only hold a ship up to 300 tons. So you wouldn't be able to to have the Iacau, uh class trader clamped. Oh, really? So did you, did you man it and tell them to go somewhere else? Then that would have been what we did. Yeah. Yes. We would have... Uh, uh, yeah, that's true. Well, you want to send them to Drenix? Yeah, that'd be fine. We could send the, the hired crew we have so that we know they're going to get over there. Yeah. 
Okay. Um, so we don't have that one with us. Oh, so it's but, just us out here. Okay. So I don't but know this ship buying... but the yacht is only two hundred tons, so you could technically clamp onto the yacht. I'm just how thinking is, how is this... somebody who doesn't know what the lights do um in charge of the yacht? He's Come a on. rich bastard and he's out here. And the thing is though, I mean if his if his title holds true, uh he can either be I mean, we, we, we don't necessarily have to be a bad guy and ransom him. We could uh, we could actually do him a solid and uh, and maybe take some of the heat off of us uh, and get recognition for our ability to, you know, the Drenix Navy. We could come in under the Drenix Navy flag and get goodwill with the Imperium. Uh, but um, how far how far off of course is this going to take us? Because the whole deal was we don't have to like murder Peter Vallis if we get there first. So I'm not sure if I want to. Well, it'll take you about six hours to get to him. Um, in that time, uh, Ting can make another sensors check. All right, I like to do that. I'm gonna still add the plus two for the ship. God, only a nine, but. Okay. Well, that's that is still good. So you, uh, so in the process while you are um, running your active sensor scan, um, out at the edge of of the system, and let me bring back up. So at the edge of the system, more or less uh, way out here in the planetoids, like. 5.2 AU from the um, um, star. There is there is a a belt of planetoids, and in that belt of planetoids, you are detecting um, a ship, a derelict. Derelict. <laughs> Well, well, I'll, I'll turn that information in. Uh, you know, I mean, we don't have to get this guy. Not only that, but a derelict's not going to go anywhere. I don't. Yeah, it'll be there when you. You could pick this it'll guy up. It's still going to be there. <clears throat> yeah, yeah I, I, I guess we're going to try to try to clamp this Linus. Is that what we're doing? And just go. I'm not. Well, okay. So the but we were trying to get to the treasure first. So I didn't know if I wanted to go rescue them at all. Okay. I didn't know how far, of course, it was going to take us because yeah. So let's say we go and save this guy and all that good stuff, and then we show up and because we went off course, like Peter Vallis is there, and then we got to like deal with all that shit when we could have just gotten there and got out. So, so we're this about six hours there and six hours back. So. This derelict that you detect uh, is uh, showing up in the Rorix's uh, war book as <clears throat> being a Sindalian vessel. <clears throat> that might be our our location for this system. Uh, you know, uh, we might have to do some math or something. Is that where we were told to go, or is it just we were told to go to this system? You were told to go to the system and look for the other message club. All right. Well, we'll have to definitely take that chip out then, I guess. Um, uh, yeah, let's it, check out the derelict. It, 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 what, whether we save the lioness or not is up to you guys. I don't care either You can way. try and give him technical support over the communications, too, because it just sounds like, like if his story is what it says it is, then you might be able to walk him through it. Yeah, I could try walking him through it. I, I could take over comms and walk him through it for a little while. Uh, so you, <clears throat> you kind of get on the comms and kind of walk him through. And... Essentially, what he's telling you is that his entire maintenance panel is flashing red. This ship is doomed, according to what he's telling you. <coughs> and but he he says, uh, "Hey, uh, I mean, uh, I mean, thanks for trying to walk me through it, but I mean, this doesn't 
this doesn't sound good. I um, mean, if you guys can, if you guys are willing to give me a ride or pick me up, um, I've got several thousand credits that I keep on board, you know, just for emergencies. I'd be willing to give it to you. We don't see any other ships around, really. Uh, your sensors haven't picked anything up. Oh, no. All right, we got time. This guy's just an idiot. Oh, Let's go that. save this guy's ass. <laughs> yeah. I hope that's what's going on. Okay. Now, I'm going to do another scan for shits and giggles as we're... Uh, yeah, nine. Nope. It's just the You're... good dice giveth nope. and the bad dice taketh. <laughs> The uh, there are several. I mean, it's a gas giant, so I mean, this it probably has like 19 moons, um, and it's got a ring system, and I mean, you're detecting all sorts of shit floating around this gas giant, um, and of course, the, you're pinging the lioness too because it's in direct communications with you. Um, so are you are you just Docking him to the docking clamp and going, or are you? What are you doing? No, that's enough. What's your plan? You to move on. I suggest we just. I think we just dock and take him. What's yeah, fastest? We just, uh, docking and just taking the ship and everything. Well, I think would be the quickest and easiest way to figure out what the fuck. Uh, okay. We could we could be headed to that derelict. We don't even have to it. let him go on board. We can keep him on his own ship. Yeah, if we yeah want I to. think clamping them would be quicker. Okay. So, Beth, go ahead and make a um, piloting plus dex check. Yeah. 11. <laughs> you just got it. So, he this this yacht as you come in, he is sinking into the top layer, cloud layer of this uh gas giant and it's almost as bad as trying to skim for fuel. And so it is a bumpy ride, but but you are able to get in and clamp uh this yacht and go ahead and make another um piloting plus dex check to make it out of the uh, top layer. Can we skim while we're doing this shit? You could skim <laughs> while you're doing this, yeah. I uh, got another 11. Okay, so yeah, she she's skimming, and uh, you've got him clamped. Two things happen. Uh, so you are in the top layer skimming fuel, and uh, the first thing that happens is that um, the sensor panel lights up with three hostile ships. Yeah, you knew it was going to happen. Um, these ships were hiding behind a moonlit, <clears throat> and uh, they are there are two Star Ray class interceptors. And what is the other one? It is a Vulture class salvage hauler that's pinging as the Invigilator. Um Oh, I'm sorry. The 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 two uh Star Ray class are the Invigilator and the Death's Actuary. And uh they are all three of them are heading towards you. They are um at medium range. <clears throat> Too close. Oh well, we're, yeah. We're going to get into all that. I guess we're probably going to have to do initiative shit before we... And Linus... Well, we'll yeah. just leave Linus, too. She's She is docked with you guys, so I guess it doesn't get much closer range than that. Um, the second thing that happens is... Uh, Keith, your maintenance board and the security <laughs> panel lights up because somebody is using a torch to try and cut through the airlock from the Lioness 2 into your ship. I'm going to go ahead and start headed that way. Uh... Mm -hmm. Wouldn't they just release the clamp at that point? Yeah. Release the ship. You could. 
That, that's we, yeah. We could release it right in, into that gas giant and yeah. just keep going. And what kind Bye. of yeah? Maybe you could do a little spin, you know, to give it some crazy trajectory as we shoot it off. <laughs> yes, you could do that. Hold on here. I'm setting up initiative. So. What We've got an invigilator, star ray inceptors, two of them. Yep. Yep. Oops. We've got a lot of guns. Do we know their capabilities, though? The star ray interceptors? Uh, I will tell you. Give me just a second here. Get off my bed. Get off the bed. Move. <clears throat> if we hit those little ships with the fucking ion cannon that probably will just shut that down yeah or you could hit them with something bigger that's Early up to you. Oh, we can hit them with everything we have. I mean, that's. <laughs> yeah, fuck those guys, right? It's, yeah, we can. I mean, <laughs> our targets don't have to be the same motherfucker, though. I mean, we can. <clears throat> Keith was saying we could jump. Yeah, we're far enough away from. Uh... Yeah, you still have enough fuel for another jump one. Uh, in fact, if you wanted to, you could uh, set course for the uh, derelict and jump and just come back out in a week. Let's do it. Fuck these guys. So, uh, I, I, let's see what size they are and what they're going with before we... Okay, I mean, yeah. So yeah, everybody needs to roll ow, an ow. initiative. Uh, ow, ow, ow. <laughs> if, uh, if you would like, uh, Beth, if you want, you could do a, uh, what, tactics navy? Mm, that's probably not helpful. Let's see. Mm, add anything else to it? Yeah, the intellect or education to the tactics naval role. Yeah, well, she depending. So she would do tactics naval plus intellect or education, and uh, the effect of that could be a plus or minus to your guys's initiative. I got eight. Okay, so it's a zero. Yeah. Uh, okay. <laughs> Go on. Uh, what did Gregor get? Seven. Doesn't mean too much for Gregor because there's not much he can do in space combat right now. He doesn't have the skills. <laughs> and I need a better vac suit skill. Okay, so uh, so Ting, uh, you get to go first. You're on the bridge at the sensors and comms panel. What are you, what do you want to do? Well, we've got these three things, and one of them is like a salvage hauler. You know, uh, we we need to get information. So, so. the Starry Interceptor is a 200 ton uh, ship. Uh, so these things are basically like a flying wedge, but they do have an interesting uh, feature in that <clears throat> they have a uh, a remote grappling arm, a, a heavy grappling arm that they can be uh -huh. that they can use to grab onto ships and uh -huh. other pieces of equipment. Um, uh -huh. 
Good luck with that. I'm going to go ahead and, and lock this front guy. They are armed with two double turrets uh, that are equipped with beam lasers. So they've got four beam lasers. On. The, yeah. The other ship, the Invigilator, uh, which is a salvage hauler. Is dead. Find this. There we go. Vulture class salvage hauler is a 400 ton ship. Um, <laughs> so you guys have run into these before as well. In fact, uh, Maria Silverhand uh, flew a salvage hauler. It mm -hmm. is a 400 ton ship. It has two of those heavy grappling arms. Um, it also has a 20 ton launch and docking space and is equipped with a single double turret that is pulse lasers. Well, I got an eight for a, a lock on front man there. Okay. So you get a lock, uh, which will give a plus two. Well, that'll increase that. It does not. Uh, so that'll give you a plus two bonus to whoever is going to shoot. Uh, Keith, what are you doing? Um, I'm debating uh, whether we should jump or not because if we jump, that's going to slow us down on our search. That's true. Well, It'll take a can... week. <clears throat> and how long? How long would it take us to fly out there anyway? Well, it is the ship is pinging. Uh, it is 900 million kilometers away. So at f at thrust five. Uh, 900 million kilometers away, it may be shorter to just jump. Then really? jump it. Fuck it. All right. I mean, even at 5G thrust, I mean, that that's a long that, trip. That's a long way. Yeah, that's a long yeah. trip. The it thing is, is, yeah, if we, if we move away from them... Uh, we could, I mean, we can outrun these guys and we can get out of their range and we can launch lots of missiles and we have the par pinnacle barbette and the ion cannon. Uh, you know, uh, what is our, do we have a pulse laser left? A triple pulse laser, uh, a triple barbette. It and... has, let's see here. Weapons. Uh, it's got two dual turrets with pulse lasers, a, and a missile barbette or four missile barbette we've we traded in a missile barbette for the ion cannon that's right and then so you we got traded, three missile barbettes so that's right and then we traded one of the 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 pulse ones for a uh, a particle barbette triple particle barbette oh that's right okay yeah we wanted that range and that damage and that radioactive so you've got two missile barbettes particle barbette um, the ion cannon barbette, and then two double turrets with pulse lasers. So yeah, you got, yeah, you got quite a few guns on here. Um, I don't like the numbers. Uh, I don't like the numbers either. But um, we could take them, I believe. So the question is, do we fight or do we jump? We jump. I'm I'm asking the captain. The captain says we jump. jump. We jump. Yeah, yeah. So we're jumping. That's that's yeah, it. So, gonna, so yeah. to tell you, uh, at, 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 at five G, at five G, uh, how high, sir? Right, that far, high. Nine hundred million kilometers. After we get by the other ship, if our shit is there, we can come back here and whoop their ass. They've kind of shown their hands yeah. already, too. Like so, we know how many 900, 900 million kilometers uh, at 5G would be 74.5 hours. So, oh. mm, three days. Yeah, yeah, so, I mean, you you could burn at 5G and get there in three days. Or you they can... won't know where we jumped to either, though. Yeah, that's so, true. Like, exactly right. you know? Yeah, or you so could, like I said, you could take the extra two days, jump, be gone a week, and 
Oh, we got that stealth jump. You know, yeah, no, we, we don't have in. stealth jump. Yeah, you don't. Uh, yeah, you do. On the Rorix, I, yeah. I didn't think we did. Oh, okay. uh, jump yeah. two, early jump, energy efficient, and stealth jump. Oh, okay. Yeah. All so, right. Yeah, make your rolls and fucking make this shit happen. Let's. let's All right, I'm let's doing it. Fuck out of here. So you're yeah. you need to make an astrogation check. Right. And I got um, 15 on my astrogation check. Okay, oh, so wow. Keith is plotting the astrogation. The invigilator is going to fire its double, its double turret with the pulse laser. Take evasive action, Captain. And well on my turn, man. Uh, and just hits. Uh, da, da, da. Here. Or pulse lasers 2D plus one. Oh. Ten points off of your hull. Yeah, I mean, so you're down to 230 hull points. Yeah. That's yeah. not a big deal. You need and, to get some things. And uh Invigilator is approaching with its whole one thrust point, capable of one G of thrust. <clears throat> Captain Beth, what would you like to do? <clears throat> can she, can she okay. jump at this point? Not yet. Uh, Keith it is doesn't just, take time. Keith yeah. is just is plotting the astrogation. Okay. So I think I'm going to use my turn to pilot mostly to try and uh, avoid any um, hits that might connect. Okay. So are you, are you going to uh, increase your, the distance between you two or? Use two thrust points and they would still. Because he, the, the invigilator's uh, approaching close range. Oh, if, okay. If, I need how to far sense. can we get with five thrusts just trying to get the fuck away? Oh, you quite, quite. You're gonna put some distance, yeah. I mean, if we could get within long range of them, they can't shoot us anymore. I don't think. So let's see here. One, two, three. So you could you could theoretically go to very long range. That's outside of their weapons range, Captain. That's all ass away from them. Yes. Okay. Could we use all five thrust points, or should we save one for maneuvering? Yeah, I'll if, save one for. If or, you, well, okay. Can I use three points for thrust and two, reserve two for maneuvering? Yeah, and so okay. that would get you to. Just to long range. Okay, great. That's still okay. good. That's still pretty good. That's a good. That's a good mix of the two. But that gets gives us some space. You know, hopefully, hopefully, uh, you know, who's going to return fire? Is that just? I will. You guys. Uh, <laughs> okay. Well, I mean, we, I can theoretically, shoot. Theoretically, yeah. Theoretically, we at least got some NPC gunners that can shoot things back. That's true. Yeah. You do. So yeah. Beth has put the hammer down and at 3G and increased the distance a bit. Uh, Gregor, what would you like to do? Captain, I can either be security or I can fill in for the engineers. I have some engineering skills, particularly power. So we we don't need a, um, a power check yet, do we? Uh, well, I mean, he could make the power check and uh, start transferring power to the 
to the uh, jump drive. That would be helpful. Okay. So the question then, <laughs> uh, so you have there is not six hundred power. Uh, basic ship functions are a hundred and twenty. Uh, weapon systems. Eh, you've got plenty of power. I mean. Yeah, he can make the uh, he can make the power check, and you don't really have to turn off anything. Okay, so the lights kind of dim, and uh, he is transferring power to the jump drive, is what he's doing. Uh, the first star rate interceptor. That was. The wrong screen. There we go. What's the acceleration on these race star ray interceptors? One? No, they are quite a bit quicker. They have three G's of thrust. So um, the first thing they are going to do is they are both going to fire their well, are they going to fire their beam launchers? Let's see. What does this say? This says beam lasers have medium range. Uh, no, so their pilots are going to use three G's of thrust to get into medium range. And we'll then fire. Here is the first guy. That's a hit. So how do I use the other point? I'm sorry, what was that? Oh, um, that's right. Uh, hold on, I will tell you. That's a very good question. Uh, combat, space combat chapter, here we go. Space combat, 164. <clears throat> so any remaining thrust can be used as a, as a reaction to dodge incoming fire. This is covered on page 171. <laughs> You could have just told me right then and there, but, you know, okay, I'll go to page 171, <laughs> since you guys like to send me all over the place, right? Uh, it says, evasive action. Each point of unspent thrust will allow the spacecraft, spacecraft to attempt to dodge one attack. The attack suffers a negative DM equal to the pilot's skill. So what is your, what is your piloting skill? Two. Okay, so they have a minus two. Uh, how many thrust points are you going to spend? One. Okay, so with an eight, he just hits. So that's good because he doesn't get the plus two to damage. Uh, which means... well, we've got armor of four. So right. Oh, that's right. You do have an armor of four. So uh, you didn't take ten points uh, before. You took six points. Uh, so that's that's not as bad. So pulse laser, or I'm sorry, beam laser. Whatever beam. super dense means. And he, each one gets two shots of that. So 1D plus one. So after your armor, uh, you take another two points to the hull. You're fucking up our paint zone. Second yeah. gunner on the first ship. Four. Go ahead. Uh, oh, so they're going to hit again. Yeah. Um, but a... I... You've got another dodge point you can use. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So that means That's that they, you, you roll 
and uh, you pull you pull a baby Anakin, and uh, you roll the ship, and they miss you. Uh, two out of three of them hit. <laughs> the next star ray is going to make his shot and <laughs> miss terribly. Um, in fact, he's going to hit his friend. He might hit his friend. Um, I mean, I was oh God. Yeah, uh, yeah, I think he is going to hit the other star ray on accidente. <laughs> Luckily the other star ray's armor uh takes the uh takes the hit. And you can hear over the comms where the the other star ray is like, "What are you doing?" Uh <laughs> and the last shot Fuck you, I'm going to kill you when we get back to base. <laughs> <laughs> Last one hits with a nine for five points, so you take one more point to the hull. Okay. Fuck him up, Ox. Ox, what would you like to do? Uh, Did Ting get me... Uh... The target lock on one of them? He does. He he has okay. a target lock on Invigilator, which is at long range. Okay, and I will shoot at it. Do you want me to be using the particle bar bet? That's probably the best. Yeah, and then we need to make our NPCs shoot all the other guns. Okay, so I get plus two, right, for the uh, target lock? Correct. Here goes. Okay. Got a 10. That is a plus two to damage. And. So. Particle bar bet does 4D. So 4D plus two. Okay. 11. Okay. So 11 <laughs> points. That's radioactive damage. <laughs> oh, that's unfortunate because the Vulture class salvage hauler does not have any armor. Good. Nuke them. And so they take damage directly to their hull uh, and... That means I feel bad for him sitting in the deep gravity well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh, darn. Wait. No, I don't. <laughs> Go ahead and uh, where is my thingy? My thingy is. Yeah, that's the thing about being bait. Sometimes you're the prey. Yeah. As we start unleashing hate on these ships, they're I mean, as soon as as soon as our missile volleys and and all that start going, I I, I think they're going to have a bad day. Uh, go ahead and roll two d six. Two d six. Oh man. Two ones. Yeah. I suck. Okay, well... Well, that's the crit table, though. That's different. That's okay. That's That might not be bad. Yeah, so all they take a uh, critical hit to their sensors. Uh, they will be at a minus two uh, for sensor checks. You know, though... Uh... Seven. Ooh, that's shitty. You guys, because you guys did take a crit as well, you take another additional two points of hull damage, uh, which isn't necessarily as bad. Uh, so the Linus 2 is, is seriously trying to cut into your airlock. They are about halfway through. Uh, they're using a, a plasma torch to cut through the airlock. 
Um, but that, that's all they're doing. I guess that's all they can. Oh, yeah, we're going to send Marines to that. Okay. So, oh, yeah. ships Marines should go. Do we, do we have any? Do we have any gun toadies that we can send from the. Yeah. We've yeah, got we have a bunch there. of Marines. Yeah, I think you guys, and, you guys got 12 Marines. So. And yeah. can't, yeah, and can't. Uh, uh, at least the automated ship system shoot the missiles and the ion cannon and the pulse oh, that's laser. Right. That's right. You you have your other uh, guys. So, yes. Uh, what else do you want to shoot at them? We want to shoot missiles. At, Kitchen at, sink. Yeah, like, I mean, just, I, I think if we just take out one or, or, shoot, or shoot a missile array at, at both interceptors and and then maybe uh the the ion cannon at one and so are you the, sending so you got two, you can launch uh two missiles at a time yeah are you sending two at or one at each interceptor or are you sending a volley of two at an interceptor at one of them uh whatever uh let's do a volley of two at one interceptor ion okay. cannon at the other interceptor and the laser at that other interceptor. Okay, so the laser hits. Uh, the missiles will hit next round. Uh, but the laser uh, does hit. And then the ion cannon at that at one. So see how he likes that. Okay, hold on. Uh... Maybe we... Maybe we shut the iron can at the heavy ship. It's going to be one of the interceptors. They're both, you know, they're, it, well, it'll they fuck have their power. So the pulse laser, somebody needs to roll. Those are double turrets? Yes. Yeah. One of the pulse laser turrets has hit. So somebody. That's barbet. Don't want barbet damage. Here we go. Roll 2D plus 2. All right. Okay. That's a seven. I got a 12. And that was at one of the star rays, is that right? Yeah. yeah. So seven minus their four, they take three to their, um, to their hull, which means roll 2d6. 12. Okay. It's already up there. It well, is... no, it would be a 10. It would be a 10, because not plus 2. Okay. Sorry. Ooh, that's unfortunate for them. Uh, all they Their J-Drive takes a uh, critical hit. All checks to use jump drive are at minus 2. Uh, next. Pulse laser that... turret... Okay. Roll 2D plus 4. Yikes. Four, We're going to take another plus. 10 and uh, roll 2D6. Uh, oh, there. Yeah, cool. So a six. They take a crit to their armor. Their ar the armor is reduced by one. So they now have armor three. You just shred their armor right off of them. Uh, and you, last but not least, you do have a ion cannon. Yeah. Barbette. Uh, da, da, da. Okay. Yikes. All right. So, Ion Cannon Barbette. Ooh, they miss. Yeah, happens. Okay. 
Uh, he getting spaced. Whoever's shooting that gun, I'm make a mark on their log. <laughs> so we're back to Tang. Tang, what would you like to do? And it looks like a nuclear cloud in the shape of a skull. Yeah. Right? <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, yeah, you guys still have. I mean, you've still got a lo uh, sensor lock on Invigilator, and you still have the Lioness Two attached to your docking clamp. I thought we released it. Right? Yeah, nobody's that's... released it yet. Oh, that was that's... your plan, but nobody's done it yet. Oh, I didn't do Can it. Can I release it? Yeah. yeah. I will release the Lioness Two docking clamp. Just okay. Bye. Okay, so it kind of goes all the way back here, um, and it when you so when you release it, um, the the lioness two just kind of tumbles away, and it is not under any power of its own. <laughs> it's just sitting there tumbling. Um, is there still something trying to get in? No. Okay, I didn't think they could hang on with that much speed. I was just, just making sure. Actually, that's, that is a good question. So, they... Okay, so they may... So the, the two guys that were... or I'm sorry, there were four guys that were trying to cut into your... Um, into your airlock. When the Lioness 2 is unclamped and tumbles away... These guys were, luckily for them, they made their vac suit check. They were clamped in, and these guys are now pulled out and are hanging by their security ropes or security lines on the ship that is tumbling through space with no power oh, of its own. They're fucked now. Okay. Yeah, that, yeah that's going to be an uncomfortable situation. So Ting has cut the Lioness 2 loose. Keith, what would you like to do? You power has been transferred. You could hit the jump button. Uh, it is up to the captain. Should I jump? Do you, I mean, we've got him on the run, but we we could definitely jump. They're not. They're not. They're a, not on the run yet. Actually. <laughs> okay, I missed a little bit to see how how hard we hit him. Yeah. Well, I mean, we've done some damage. I mean, my personal assessment is if you use stress four, uh, we get uh, so they're really ineffective against us. If we use stress five, we're at an extreme range from them catching us. Uh, we could, we could. I mean, the missiles are going to start hitting next round. Uh, yeah, they're actually going to the the missiles are going to hit uh, on Ox's turn. Oh, okay. Yeah, so I mean, you know, it, it's either or. I I don't see. I, really, I'm I'm wanting. I'm kind of like you, Captain. If we just go ahead and get to the to the treasure, that that would be or, or the or the derelict ship. I mean, that's interests me far more than these peons. But uh, but a week versus like seventy eight hours or something. That's, yeah, that's a bigger but, I mean, we're, I yeah, thought. we are on a ticker on this dorsal code that you have. So I mean. Okay, yeah. Let's let's go ahead and um, let's lose them. Let's. I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, do five thrusts towards the derelict thing and not jump. So we're not gonna jump. Okay. So um, you can do something else if you'd like. Yeah, I I could fire something. Um, except that we just fired in the last round. So and you, you am could I good fire, to... you could fire the pulse lasers or. The ion cannon or the, I mean, Ox has got the particle beam barbette. So, I mean, you could take over control of one of the other ones. I'll take oh. the ion cannon. Fuck yeah, okay. kick him off and his two rolling <laughs> ass. So, you have a, you, there is a sensor lock on Invigilator, so you could uh, get a plus two if you want to shoot at Invigilator. Let's do that. No, Invigilator's got thrust one. Yeah, They're not going to catch up with us anyway. Yeah, but we, got we need to take them all out. Doesn't that just kill their electronics temporarily? Yes. I thought that's what the main thing is. Yeah, that they won't be. A, that makes them totally ineffective for this combat. They have. They have a lot of lasers. They oh, okay. All right, go for it then. Yeah, that sounds good. Okay. Okay. So that is. Well. Okay. 
So roll 2d times 10. Okay. 80. Jesus. That's going to fuck their power grid up, man. Mm -hmm. yeah. So this says... I like the name Invigilator. <laughs> well, I mean, we could take that ship if you want. I, I mean, we, 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 I mean, we will win this fight. Uh, they are uh, what do we? What do we need a salvager for? <laughs> when an ion weapon successfully hits a target, roll for its damage, but ignore any armor the target possesses. Instead of applying damage to the target hull, it instead temporarily deducted from the target's power. Okay, so let's see how much power does he have. He has 135, which is now down to 45. Wow. Uh, and his basic ship systems require 80. His maneuver drive alone requires 40. So he can't move. Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, his drives shut down, and you see him kind of fall back um, even further away. Uh, nice shot. So, okay. Uh, Invigilator is kind of boned. Let's see. But he does have pulse lasers. What's the range on pulse lasers? I know they have... How much power do they need? Nine. Damn it. Uh, they do have long range. Yeah, he could... He could... No. No, he can't. He can't hit you. He is out of range. So that's his issue. Uh, Beth, what are you doing? Hitting the gas. Go okay, ahead. so you're going full five, uh, going for a full burn, yeah. and everybody is sucked back into their seats as. Oh! <laughs> yes. So and... I can't take it anymore. <laughs> It kind of looks like that. Uh, Invigilator and Lioness 2 are now off of your sensors entirely. But the Star Ray Interceptors are still at uh, distant range, or just coming uh, into very long range. And so, um, yeah, Beth is heading towards the... Um, the planetoids and towards the derelict at full burn. Gregor, what are you going to do? Well, at this stage, I can either stay in engineering and watch that, or I can put my combat environment suit on and my shotgun and just do security patrols. Yeah, make sure that everybody got fire a gun, too. I don't care. I mean, go for it, right? It's minus three. Oh, okay. Well, I mean, <laughs> yeah. I have no, I have no turret skill, no gunnery yeah. skills at all. Yeah, oh, the, okay. the pulse lasers are out of range, but I mean, you could launch another couple of missiles at minus well, three. I a, but I mean, I, it, but I, I have a target lock on one. But the nice thing, even if they're standard oh. missiles, they're smart missiles. So they pretty much, once you hit the button, they pretty much fly themselves. Ooh, yeah, shoot something at the invigilator. Yeah. Fun. Shoot some missiles. Everybody's <laughs> doing it. <laughs> I'll shoot I'll shoot two missiles at the ones that uh, doesn't have missiles going at it. Okay, so this one doesn't have any missiles coming at it, so you launch another couple of missiles. Those missiles will reach that target now in two rounds. Uh... Da, da, da. The this star ray interceptor that is right no is <laughs> this one uh, he is going to well you guys are going too fast he can't he cannot keep up but uh, he can still close up a little bit right he he's his maximum thrust is three and your guys you guys are going at five so. Yeah. No, he can't. He's just going to get further and further He's behind. He's just going to get further and further behind. Um, the other star rate interceptor is going to attempt to shoot down some missiles. Ew. 
Dang, look at that. Don't they have to roll to see if they see the missiles first? Uh, no. They they know no. the missiles are coming, but and he got oh. an effect of five, so he yeah. uh, shoots down the other two missiles, or the first sure. two missiles. That's so rude. <laughs> <laughs> How dare you shoot down my missile, Ox? What would you like to do? Did um, some missiles hit? No. No, he shot him down. The Starry Interceptor shot him down. Well, I'll shoot at the Starry Interceptor. He's like the only one left in range. Okay, go for it. Are you going to live, Ting? Yeah, I'll be all right. You got an eight. That is a hit. Hold on here. Okay. So, do, 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 no critical damage, but, and you're using the particle beam, right? Yeah. Yes, sir. Particle bar bet, 4D. Okay. 4D. 32, 32. 18. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. Okay. So, ouch. Good old nuclear radiation well, damage. Well, it is a critical, and his armor takes, or his hull takes 14. Roll 2d6. Going off. Five. Ooh. Well, that's a good one. So you hit, uh, does he have? He has. You hit one of his double turrets, and it is now going to be at a minus one uh, for him to make any attacks with that turret. I'll take it. Oh, I bet the gunner there is taking some good radiation damage. <laughs> right? Yeah. <clears throat> uh, Ting, what are you? What are you doing? Uh. This one is the one I'm going to go ahead and put a, a lock on him. Okay. You know, just to keep my end of the combat going here. It's a nine. That should be a success. Yes. So that is a plus two for anybody that wants to shoot at him. Um, and he I will send can I send him a message, too, with comms to power down, power down their ships and prepare to surrender. Okay. Uh, Keith, what would you like to do? Um, I'll try and fire the ion cannon at the one that we have a lock on. Okay. That's eight. That is a hit. Uh, roll 2d times 10. Did you add your plus two from the lock? Yeah, I did. It was okay. just barely eight. <laughs> That's 70. Jesus. Uh, so... He... He has no power, I bet. He has 70 points of power left. Uh, 40 of that is for basic ship systems. He requires 60 for maneuver drive. So his uh, engines drop down, and he quickly falls back. <laughs> Ting's blowing up. So the the so you hit the the star ray interceptor and its engines drop out and he is dropping back. Um, you receive a message from Invigilator, and Invigilator is uh, captained by uh, President Yang of PRC, and PRC uh, stands for. People's, People's Republic Day. Commission. No. <laughs> um, they, and People's Republic. They are a corporation, actually. All of these oh. ships are a corporation. It stands for Proactive Recycling Corporation. <laughs> and uh, I just want to save the environment. <laughs> 
Well, we'll recycle their ships for them. Yeah. Interesting that. Uh, that's weird. I'm still missing items. I could have swore. Yeah. Anyways, um, President Yang um, messages you, and uh, um, they don't surrender so much as um well he's two things he has put two and two together he sees that you are on a trajectory heading towards the derelict and president yang tells you that um uh he says um he proposes a cessation of hostilities um they weren't trying to pirate you they were simply um this is PRC, that that whole planetoid belt, that is PRC territory, and they were they were trying to, as is this gas giant, they were trying to uh, protect their territory, is what he tells you. Before we even headed in that direction. Well, you never know. I mean, there's a lot of piracy going on in the Trojan Reach. Well, you must... Uh... You this must is a honeypot. Yeah, well, you know, if if you want to, if you want us to say, if you, what a good observation, a honeypot. Uh, if you want us to stop hostilities, you must pay tribute for your insolence and firing us in such a disrespectful manner. He says, uh, in, "Well, our missiles are still on their way. We as, will send more, as, and it's going to get worse." As I'm a, just saying, as a tribute to you guys. Um, he says, I can agree to that. How about his tribute? See, that planetoid belt that you're heading toward, that's our, that's PRC's junkyard. So PRC is a salvaging corporation. Um, a lot of times what they'll do, uh, they will uh, go out and collect salvage and they dump it into their little junkyard area. And uh, basically what he's telling you is there's a lot more ships over there, uh, uh, PRC ships over there in the junkyard. H how about as... As payment to you guys, he gives you a free ticket to go in and uh, go do whatever it is that you're looking to do. How would he feel about, um, uh, you know, of course I do appreciate that, but uh, also, what do you think about in the future that if you would like to really do some proactive recycling, you know, uh, perhaps you should uh, uh, be willing to, to freelance under under our direction is we would make a much stronger ally than than you would want as an enemy. He says sure. uh, he would. He says he'll take that under advisement um, and give it some thought. Uh, he is assuming uh, in the ship that you're flying that you must be uh, what is being referred to across the Trojan Reach as the infamous Pirates of Drenax. And, uh, oh, and he says uh, that, uh, so he admits that, uh, and he, he says that it, it, it could work out that way. But he, he tells you that, um, that the, that PRC came across uh, the wreckage of a Sindalian courier ship, which is the derelict that you are currently locked on. Right. Did anything taken off of it? Uh, he says that they found that courier a couple of years ago. They've never bothered hauling her back uh, to the junkyard. So, so the, this courier is just outside the junkyard. You're going to have to go through that planetoid belt to get to it. But he says uh, they they found it. They just haven't really gotten around to hauling it back. Um, but he can tell you that she's just too badly damaged to really be worth reclaiming. Um, and he, he says, uh, you know, if you don't mind my asking, why do the infamous pirates of Drenax care about a 2,000-year-old casualty of the Battle of Thebes? Because our business of our own. You should be should be more respectful in the questions that you ask and know whose presence you're in. <laughs> we will we will we will leave you spaced and be selling your ship for parts just for the gigs of a prostitute run. You should know that. We don't give a fuck. And you should know this. <laughs> you shot at us and just be happy that you can live to tell the tale that you sparred up with us. 
if if you have any questions to our power, we can go round two. And I assure you, we will not stop shooting until you're just floating as fucking naked dust through the clouds. Be you a president, peasant, or whatever the fuck you want to call yourself. Know your role. Uh, Where do you get all this? (laughs) I know he's good at that, right? (laughs) He's good. You heard there's a big red X on it. It might be true. It might not. But I do want to warn these guys about Peter Ballas' gang. Because, um, yeah. So if they see... Do we know any of the ships Peter Ballas is on? Uh, You know that Peter Ballas... I mean, he, he... Peter Vallis has a his gang has four ships. You know that uh, his his uh, flagship is a Corsair class uh, called Lion's Bane. Okay, I want to tell him that, and I want to tell him if you see these guys, like shoot us uh, some comms. That would be way better than trying to engage because you will probably probably kill you guys. Getting in good with the junkyard gang, very good business move for our first. So let's yeah, try and well, give him some tips. I don't okay. mind being nice and, and giving them tips and anything <laughs> like that. I, but they do need to know that, that their tone needs to reflect the order of who's in charge. And that's yeah. Yeah, yeah, they do need to be scared of us a little bit. Yeah. Well, that's, I mean, you, you put the spank on two of their ships. They're, they're aware. That's true. <laughs> they are yeah. aware. So we will pick up next week with you guys reaching the 2,000-year-old Sindalian courier uh, that is floating 900 million kilometers out. And uh, we'll pick up there next week at 7 o'clock on Wednesday night. It was really I'm fun. Fighting. Had fun, Thank yeah. You. All right. I enjoyed it. Yeah, we didn't have to kill too many people. Yeah, great. you know. Uh, we'll do right. better next week for Tank. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> have a good night, guys. You too, thanks.